Hi there. Today I thought we would be looking at growing neural cellular automata, which is an article on distill.pub, which I found pretty neat. Um, <clears throat> so this is kind of an interactive article. If you don't know distill.pub, uh, check it out. It is a cool new concept as an alternative to the classical journals or the um, the conference system. So what it allows you to do is to kind of write articles that are a bit more interactive, a bit more um, in like engaging and uh, don't have the, like there's no PDFs, there's no pages, there are animations and so on. So I thought we'd be looking at this article today, which is kind of a growing neural, cell neural cellular automata. So if you don't know what cellular automata are, this is a very kind of old concept. Uh, the most famous one is called the game of life, where you have these cells. Here you can see every pixel is a cell and they follow some kind of update rule. Um, and usually it's the update rule, something like if my neighbor is alive, I'm going to be alive as well in the next time step. And if or if enough neighbors are alive, and if only very few neighbors are alive, I'm going to die. So this gives rise to these kind of patterns. And here the same is done with color. And the update rules are a bit more complicated. So basically, ah, uh, here, a traveler. Oh, nice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the, so in the game of life, if you play it, the, the most prestigious thing to get is are these kind of uh, travelers. I have not... W this is the first time I've managed to do this in this thing. <laughs> so what does it do? So each pixel here is kind of an autonomous uh, thing that is only allowed to look at its neighbors in order to decide whether or not in the next time step it is going to be alive. Look, it's like incorporating again. Um, so so each, each cell looks at its neighbors and then decides what its next state will be. And here it's not only alive or dead, um, dead would be white uh, and alive would be anything else but it is also I guess this white isn't it is also the color so the, each cell decides on what color it should have um, and then this is a live thing so it kind of reproduces right you can see if I start it new if you double click here it grows from somewhere else and this is completely local. So these cells really only look at their neighbors. That's the special part, right? Um, they don't look at the global structure. It's not like a GAN that can look at the entire picture and decide what what's still missing. Um, what these can also do, if you destroy part of it, they can kind of grow back. Um, just, again, just out of local update rules at the level of the individual cells and their neighbors. They're um, trained to do these big structures. So let's look at how they do it. So basically, here's how they model a cell. And um, let's go over here. So each cell, as I said, is made up of 16 channels. And here it's modeled as three by three, but I think each cell is really one pixel. And each cell is allowed to look at its eight neighbors, right? So each cell um, is allowed to look at its eight neighbors across 16 different channels. And the 16 channels uh, here mean the first three are RGB. So this is the actual color that is seen. Then there is an alive or dead channel. So an, what they call an alpha channel. So if this channel is high, um, the cell is considered alive. Otherwise it is considered dead and not part of the pattern. So a cell can come alive or die uh, depending on its neighbors and then the rest the rest 12 channels are what they call hidden channels so the uh, cell is allowed to encode some hidden state there so there's each cell is represented by the 16 dimensional vector which is not much right and then each cell is allowed to look at three things so from the bottom here it's allowed to look at its own state so at its own 16 dimensional vectors and it is allowed to look at its neighbors and it does this by doing a convolution with a Sobel filter and the Sobel filter is simply a fixed filter that you do a three by three convolution with as you can see here is basically a gradient 
uh, filter. So it basically measures the difference between what's to the left of the cell and what's to the right of the cell. And here in the Sobel Y direction, the same in the Y direction. So it's basically allowed to look at uh, gradients in states of its neighbors. This is modeled after real cells kind of looking at chemical gradients in their neighborhoods. So, and this is all, this, this is all that the cell has to decide what it's supposed to do next, right? And what we want is we want that each individual cell only looking at its neighbors produces in, in total, they will produce these kind of very complex pattern. So the update rule is the following. You convolute with the Sobel filters and you take the cell identity. Uh, you put this all into a vector. You put it through a very, very small neural network. So this is one dense layer, one ReLU, and then another dense layer to get the next 16 dimensional vector, which is the next state. And that defines your update rules. That doesn't really define the next state, that defines the delta to the next state, kind of like a residual neural network. Um, so basically, which cells need to come alive in the next time step, which cells need to die, and how are they to change their colors, right? And then uh, you get the, the output of the next step, right? So that's, that's basically the entire thing. So all that is learned here is the, the update rule of the neural network, right? So basically the neural network decides, it looks at a cell and its neighbors and decides what the information in the cell in the next step should be, right? And you do this for multiple time steps. That's, I actually wanna go down here. You do this for multiple time steps. The initial state is simply one cell that is alive here in the middle. Everything else is dead. This cell is alive and black. You do this for many steps, right? And then at some point you get an output and you compare the output to your desired output. You compute a loss that is differentiable and because your update rule is differentiable and your loss is differentiable, you can back prop through time uh, to the original um, to the original uh, pattern here. And you can basically learn this update rule by backpropping through time. This is a bit like an LSTM. And if you see in the architecture here, I think this residual connection is really the key to making this work over time, because usually I would not expect um, something like this to easily emerge over time because you have the problem of vanishing and exploding gradients. And you have no way of mitigating this problem here in this um, simple uh, neural network. But <coughs> um, in any case, they backprop through time here. Uh, so each of these update steps, which again, this, these are, this, isn't, this isn't one neural network with many layers. This is the same neural network applied over and over and over and over again. And then there is a loss computed. So basically the gradients will accumulate over these steps basically tell the network what it needs to adjust to go from this one single black pixel to this final desired state. If you do this over and over again, you learn things. Um, you learn a update rule that will give rise to that um, pattern, hopefully. Now, here is a kind of an illustration of this alive and dead thing. So what they do is they consider cells that have an alpha channel said this one of these channels called alpha if they have an alpha channel above 0 0.1 it's considered alive right and part of the of the loss right um <clears throat> then the neighbors the neighbors of these cells that are below 0 0.1 but are neighboring a cell that is mature um alive they're called growing they're also part of the loss right so simply by being close to something, someone that is alive, a cell that is alive, you are considered alive as well. But your neighbors aren't, right? You, like only the neighbors of really alive. So there's really alive, kind of alive, and then there is dead. And dead, the, the meaning of dead here, uh, the gray ones, is that they're not, they, they won't become um, part of the pattern, part of the loss, right? They are dead. Um, all right, so, what will this get you initially? So here is an, an animation. If they train this just like that, just backprop through time with a target pattern, 
and then they let it run. You see these patterns actually emerge. So that's pretty cool. But then if you let them run for longer than they've been trained, you basically have no guarantees on what's going to happen. Like these update rules were simply uh, trained to achieve the pattern within a certain number of steps, right? If you run for more than that and apply the update rules for longer than that, you you have like there's little like you have no guarantee what's going to happen. These update rules will simply continue, as you can see here, and produce some weird stuff. So they are trying to fix this. So what they do is basically they train for longer, but they do it in a, in a kind of different way. So at each, uh, at each step of training, um, and a, a step, I mean a batch over these number of time steps. So, so they, they sample, a batch initially it's just all black pixels right as we see above and then they um optimize for these number of time steps and then they're at the end so what they do is they don't always start from the black pixel but sometimes they also start from a previously seen end state so basically they take the end state of a previous training run and then they just continue from that instead of starting from the initial point. And you see after some training, um, they get better and better. So initially, you see the thing on the left here, um, <coughs> the thing on the left here being a starting state, and then it progressively gets better. So basically, by starting from end states of other things, you learn to so if the end state of the other thing isn't very good you basically learn to go to the good pattern to the to pattern you want but of course over time there's going to be more and more of these end states that you train from that are already pretty close to the pattern you want and so then what that means is you learn to reproduce the pattern so you are already at a good point you learn to stay at that good point and then that enables you to basically learn update rules that if you're not at the pattern you want, they go towards the pattern you want. But also if you run for longer, if you are already are at the pattern you want, then you stay at the pattern you want. So that's what we basically saw in the very initial demonstration where you could, this is a live demonstration like this thing up here. This is a live, this is running, right? And um, you see the update rules, they, d they are continuously applied. They basically stay at the pattern where they are. And that is also, that is learned because of this protocol that you train from end states as well as from beginning states. So the, the next thing is what I'm doing here is I can destroy part of the pattern and it will kind of regrow, right? You see that here. So. This is also a part, so for now we've also only learned to go from a single pixel, like here from a black pixel, to the pattern. But now we also want to learn to go to regrow when destroyed, because that is, this, you can see this is modeled after kind of live tissue. Um, so here you can see the their parts are cut away, and then the, mo the cells try to regrow so this is i think initially um initially when you just train them they exhibit some of that property but not like very satisfying uh in some cases so what they do is they train not only do they use end states like we saw before but also some of their training samples are simply um the pattern destroyed a bit so as you can see in some of these samples like these here they in each sample they kind of cut out uh, part of the sample and they train the update rules to regrow that part that gives you that now gives you the ability to if you damage to pretty consistently regrow the pattern as you can see here um they also train for rotation, which is non-trivial if you have these kind of pixel-based um, pixel-based models. But I 
when I jumped up because I want to keep it kind of short here. Um, so the, the entire goal of this is to kind of model uh, the behavior of, nat of natural cells uh, because the natural cells, they don't have an overarching um, view. They only have the view of their neighbors, right? And they are able to grow into very complex structures. Um, I invite you to give this a try. The distill.pub journal is very cool. It's very interactive. You can uh, play around with it. You can reproduce things in a collab. And um, yeah, shout out to the authors here, uh, Alexander Mordvintsev, Ettore Radazzo, sorry, <laughs> Randazzo, uh, Evan Nicholson, and Michael Levin. Uh, yep, that was it from me. Thanks for watching and bye-bye.